G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Sporting in on the southwest side of the map, we've got Salami1. He's going to be playing the Chinese for us today in the color blue. And his opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map, we've got Kor playing as the red Holy Roman Empire. And take a look at the map that we have got here. So this map is called Baltic. It is one of the brand new maps that has just come out. And I've got to say, I actually like it a fair bit. Now, it's quite easy to wall, or at least it looks that way. You can see that it could be easily walled off right here. You could also wall it off pretty easily to the north as well. And uh, we can see that uh, we, we can see that uh, Salami just going to be starting off with the standard water build. So we're going to be looking to expand to the water here as well. Now, big shout out goes to Litacore. Litacore arranged this show match. This is a best of five. I want to say best of five. It is a play all five show match. That means it doesn't matter how many you win. It just matters if you play all five. Uh, but now I'm going to have that dock dropping down. Um, now, when it comes to this map, now, I would believe this map probably came from a previous Age of Empires game. Now, I don't recognize it. I don't know the name uh, Baltic. Uh, but my fear is with a map like this, and it's always the way that it, it happens when you've got a little bit of asymmetry uh, in the civilizations, is, is that if you do lose the middle pond, it's highly likely you will lose the game. Now, that doesn't always happen. We've seen players like with, with China, uh, as an example, just sort of use the starting fish uh, and, and boom up with that and then you know Song Dynasty boom behind it and then still manage to keep up in the late game uh, but obviously Core he's going to be looking to uh geez look at Core's build order what's he got going on over here he is uh he is four on wood so he's going to be looking to add a dock shortly I suspect uh but um look uh, one of the things I I feel about this or one of the things I like about this map is just simply the fact that when it comes to attacking around the side it doesn't actually look that hard. Uh, so one of the... Oh, got to be careful, got to be careful. We can put Vils in the TC right here and kill if he wanted to. If he wanted to, Salami being such a nice guy there, uh, letting that scout live. That scout very easily could have could have died. Um, so one of the things that, that you can do... Obviously, you can wall the sides here quite easily. Uh, if, if you wanted to, you could be... You could wall like here to here and then across to this one and then down to... That, or probably even just down to right there. I think that's all a wood line. So you can get a pretty nice wall in there, but by the same token, uh, you don't really have to play uh, too much to the water if you don't want to. Obviously, it's incredibly important if you are playing the water, and you can see that Core here probably didn't even realize that the map was a water map, so probably a bit of miscommunication there because he was quite late to get to that dock, only now getting it up at 245 compared to Salami, who's already got three fishing boats out, so that's already a little bit of a yikes right there. Um, but yeah, that, that's the one of the things that when it comes to, like, uh, as an example, if, if this was in the map pool right now, would I play this map? Probably not. I'd, I'd probably alt F, not alt F4, but I'd probably, uh, probably dodge this map. Definitely I would veto this map. If I got given this map and it was like, you have to play it, otherwise you'll be timed out for five minutes and you'll lose five ELO, then I'd be like, oh, all right. But what sieve am I picking? I mean, I'm probably needing to pick a water sieve. So am I picking the Rus? Well, they just got nerfed, so probably not the Rus. Do I pick the Chinese? Maybe the Chinese is, is decent. Uh, I could pick the French. We've seen the French with their hulks do pretty well. Maybe, actually, I, I remember the, the the meta eventually sat on Chinese fast castle. So you, you go for like a Chinese fast castle where you get a couple of the junks out and you go and harass the enemy and you just try and keep them in their, in their base. And at the same time behind it, you're going fast castle and you're getting war junks. And then you, you start building up war junks. And it's literally just like... Uh, it just became war junk mirrors, I, I remember. So China actually became like a pretty decent open water sieve by the end of it. So there was a period obviously where uh, where France was the king when it came to the water because you'd spin to win. Uh, but then obviously the war junks, they have a little bit longer range, a bit more attack damage. Uh, I think they've got a slightly more health as well. Uh, it's not a huge amount. Uh, but now we see some siege happening on the dock. Um, we also have increased torch speed by the looks of it. Don't tell me that. I, I just saw... That torch seemed to be firing pretty fast. And you can see the, the scouts now going to be working each other's way down. I think these guys sacrifice... Oh, you can actually see the second scout coming around from Core now. Uh, Core going to be looking to take out this scout. You can see he's, uh, he's having to head back. I'm pretty sure that Doc's actually taking double damage from these torch. So that, that gives them a little bit more threat in the early game. Uh, it's probably about the same, actually. I think it's about the same. I definitely don't think it was... It wasn't that it wasn't that fast before, but now we can see the villagers coming forward. It looks like it might be a barbican that gets dropped down here over on top of the uh, the dock. Now I, I'm suspecting that's what he goes for. Uh, with with that many, you don't pull that many villagers unless you're thinking about dropping a barbican. 
Is that what he's going to do? Wait, what? Oh my god! He, oh, the salami! Oh, the smartest guy in the world! He puts the villagers in the transport ship. He's like, yo, what's up? Not we're gonna. I'm not going to barbican my dock. I'm going to barbican your dock. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, and already we see Core reacting to it. He's like, no, 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 no. Not happening. Not on my watch. And now you can see he's just walling off absolutely everything everywhere. He's going to be bringing these, bringing these villages over. He's going to be looking for a spot for... I'm, I'm thinking there's probably a spot right here. I wouldn't be surprised. And indeed there is. Comes over, puts that down. Now this Barbican, keep in mind this Barbican was recently buffed. It's now got an improved uh, sight radius. So it can see... Uh, as far as an outpost. Now we see villagers getting pulled here. Uh, so I would look to see a couple of these villagers reshuffled around to the side here. Otherwise, he might just look to commit. He does have 12 villagers. So only 10 can fit in the Barbican. One of them going to go down. The second or all of the rest of them will make it alive. And now the Barbican is up. And immediately uh, we see that the fishing boats have to move out a little bit further. Now, it doesn't really do a lot of damage here. If I'm honest with you guys. I don't think it does a huge amount of damage here. Um, just simply because the fishing boats can just come in and out. But now he's actually just going to siege down the dock. That does damage. I'll tell you that much. That does some damage. So I'd, I'd be suspecting Core might be looking to replace his dock potentially down over to the edge here. But really going to set him behind. And i got to say, from Salami's perspective, it's such a smart move. Such a super smart move. Uh, and I'd be very curious to see what he's going to be doing behind this. Actually goes for an outpost here. Nice little defensive adaptation. Um, just to prevent uh, any dock his, of his own going down. But you got to say from Salami, like this is just beautiful. And now instead of staying on the enemy's side, he's just going to put everything in the dock and just go... Or in, in the uh, in the transport ship. So very, very smart there from Salami. He's got a couple more bills. There we go. So very smart. Because one of the things to note, when it comes to the Barbican, like, don't get me wrong, I think it's an okay landmark. I think it synergizes well with China. But at the same time, it, it ca there can be points where it's quite useful or useless or matchups that is quite useless. Like, let's say, hypothetically, that you're playing, you know, defensive China here. You've got your dock. Like, you throw your Barbican up here. Okay. Well, your enemy probably wasn't going to do too much under here anyway because you could have put an outpost there. So it's it's at, at most it's like a glorified outpost. That's essentially it. Um, you can put it on your gold mine. You can put it in like over. Oh, excuse me. Jeez, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. Uh, that that was me like trying to burp, and at the same time, my body being like, no, you can't burp, Drongo. Uh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, you can put it down here on the berries. Um, but once again, it's like it might not actually be attacked, and so it's not particularly useful. Whereas you can just bring it over here. Be a bit aggressive. Obviously, you you lose a lot of village time, but at the same time, you gain villager seconds in that you're making a Barbican, which builds very fast for you as a chi as a Chinese player. But now you see, we see the villagers actually getting taken out. So already Barbican doing work takes out two villagers. It only cost one villager to, to build it. Remember, you lost a villager here, but uh, manages to take out two. So Salami already being very annoying against Core. Now Core, he's going to be focusing on picking up relics, I suspect. I, I can only imagine he's going to be looking towards uh, that, but you can see he's already had to to make a bit of a transition down towards the south to get that going uh he's gonna be finding a couple of villages a little bit of a graphical er uh, error over here on the the left of the screen but now uh, all the fishing boats gonna go down you can see that the uh the junk unable to fire while moving just gotta gotta it, it kind of reminds me you guys ever have that friend when you're walking in the mall and he needs to take a drink and he's like all right just hold up guys i need a drink and it's like bro can can you drink and move at the same time? He's like, no, nah, I can't. <laughs> it's like, it's literally this guy. This guy is 100% like, the, he is the mall walker. He's got his, he's got his orange juice or his fucking, his, um, his chocolate milk out. And he's like, uh, hold up guys. And then he's like, he stands still, he drinks it. And now he's good to go. Now he's good to... <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, it looks like Red Regnitz Cathedral are going to be coming up behind the town center. No surprises there. We'll check and see where the prelates are at. He's got one on the gold mine. Yeah. Village are going to be working its way down. There is another uh, relic down a little bit further. Uh, but he's also got one up to the top. But you can see Salami already guarding up the relics. He knows what is up. Uh, so going to be pulling out at least one of the safe relics here. Both players having a safe relic. So really good spawns. Can I just be honest? It's, it, it amazes me that the developers fuck up relic spawns on every single fucking map. Except for Dry Arabia. And then like it, we've got these play these people that have like never really made well not ma never made maps in their life but like they're just coming into it and you've get, got these amazing spawns that are like actually fair you know like both players have a safe relic both and then you've got like the three relics that are in the middle 
it's like it's awesome two sacred sites up towards the north one sacred site down towards the south like it's actually good and now coming into wall in this relic down the bottom you can see him actually walling across here salami just knows so well how to counterplay and that's the big thing about salami so now that second relic going to be going over towards core at least you'd hope that second relic going to be coming over or well, first relic rather but even then, I feel like Salami is just outplaying Core at every... Oh, but Salami wasn't paying attention. And now the Prelate going to be running in. It looks like it might be a little bit too late. I'm getting reminiscence from that JoJo's 2014... 2004 hit. Too little, too late. Village is going to be trying once again. They look like they're going to... No, not going to take it. Not going to take it. But he manages to get the Relic. That's what he wants. And now that Scout going to be trying to make ends meet chasing down that uh, that prelate but keep in mind he's only doing two damage a pop now and you can see this the uh the the villagers have got their knives out but i tell you what they're not going to be doing too much damage and already you can see that like that one little mistake coming out right there from salami and it costs him the entire regnets because that was the the most important relic it was the second relic and you know now they've they've sort of they've neutered our boy our exodia he's only a two relic guy a two-legged guy he used to be three legs now he's only got the two but we'll take a look from Salami's perspective. You can see that he's actually collecting out the relics. He's, he's picked up... Where is he going with this? What are you doing with that? Is he going down? I got no idea where he's going. He's put one in there. Is he going for a Song Dynasty now? He is too. He's going for the Song Dynasty. Actually goes to the Imperial Palace. Hasn't used Imperial Spies just yet. First time we've actually seen this come out first for... I think it might be the first time ever. And now just going to be looking to come forward and, and do a bit of damage here with his outpost. So pretty smart move here from the um, from the villagers. Obviously, he moved those forward to deny the relic. He knew that he wasn't able to deny it. So he's just like, you know what? We're just going to make you guys actually be useful. So let's go forward. Drops the outpost down. Doesn't garrison inside. Wasn't paying attention. So the outpost of his enemy is going to get up as well. And then he's going to be able to garrison inside that as well if he wants. Probably go for a springwood emplacement. Okay, now he puts it in. There you go. Wall junk out. And uh, you can see the transport ship just uh, doing, biting a little bit of its time. Where did that? Where did he? Yeah, where are you going, Monk man? Yo, Monk, where, <laughs> where are you going, brother? What? He was like, he was intent on coming down and to collect this relic, but the relic was gone. Like, he's living in the past, my friend. Spring on emplacement? Nope. Hand cannon is. Well, hand cannon uh, slit's going to be coming through. Now going to be making a second monk. Probably a wise decision as well. Uh, it looks like he might be going for a sacred site victory potentially here, Salami. I love the way he's playing, though. Very, very safe, very far back. And I, to be honest, I, I don't actually mind this map. I do think this map is, is quite decent, but my main concern right now is that just core doesn't seem to have a lot of resources obviously he's got these back here but he's kind of tied himself up into inside his, his own base now trying to get onto farm still doesn't have his big boy up yet the, the palace of swabia finally coming through now you can see he's going to be putting it on the wood line a good spot to go down village is going to be sieging down the outpost in classic salami style and salami very ahead at this point he's got you know most of the relics uh, well, I say most of the relics. He's got one of the relics, and he's got two more on his side. The sacred sites up towards the north, they're going to get captured up by his um, his monks down towards the south also. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple more villages. What happened down here? That, oh, it was the hand cannon slits. That was it, wasn't it? Uh, and you can see now, like, now we've got a bit of a difficult spot because Core is completely locked out of gold. He's got no gold other than, like, this one at the front. All the other golds have been you know, somewhat stolen by Salami. Salami Salami really running over core at this point in time. A huge amount of fishing boats, still training fishing boats as well. Look at this. Also going to be getting additional sails in. He's getting all of his upgrades as well. Drift nets can come in shortly as well. Jeez, that's an expensive upgrade though. 500 resources. Now capturing that second sacred site. Going to get that tickling, or uh, third one actually, because he's got this one down to the bottom as well. But he's just in full control. And this Barbican still stands strong. Working slowly on the mining camp, you can see. I think it's working on the mining camp. Yeah, one damage a pop. God, I would honestly, I would just delete everything. I would get so triggered from that attack, attack sound constantly going off. Springled outpost now going to be looking to do some damage. And once again, we see more villagers falling back. All sacred sites now captured from Salami. Mark it down. 14 minutes, 24 seconds. Uh, so give him 10 minutes from there. 24 minutes, 24 seconds. Let's see how he does. And it looks like he's going to be picking up those relics. Probably bringing them to a safer monastery as well. Obviously, if that gets pushed, wants to keep them safe. So, has dropped a monastery back towards his base. A pretty smart move from him. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look and see exactly what he does. Both of these players avoiding making too much military. In fact, any military at this point in time. Do we have any military out from either player? I mean, we've got a siege workshop finally. Bombard is going to be the first 
unit that comes out for core here uh you know in, in classic high level age of empires style and, and i i say that like quite seriously as well it is very common that high level age of empires players are very passive but at the same time you know th they are aware of what their enemy is up to and by the same token look we don't have a barracks you don't have a stable you don't have an archery range coming out from salami he's just in complete control he knows exactly what his enemy is up to and so he doesn't feel the need and now we see salami going for what might be the most bad mannered castle of all time bringing forward all of the villagers and really taking this to the next level you can see he's got a lot of villagers in here gonna be trying his best to get this keep up but look at the villagers now getting pulled this thing is going up incredibly quickly i don't think there's any amount of villagers that you can pull to try and deny this yeah a little bit of a mistake but the, you can see the bombard actually already out preemptively and gonna be taking it out so never mind don't worry about the villagers coming in to take down the the uh the, the enemy villagers we've got a bombard back here baby that's gonna be doing all our hard pulling all of our hard work and now Salami is going to be repairing. You've got to be careful here. You're going to be running out of wood very shortly. And if there's anybody who knows about insufficient wood, Salami, it is me. It is not you. And, and I think we can see Salami is actually probably going to have to give up on this position just because of the fast bombard. And it actually makes so much sense for him to do that. So well played by Core. Uh, still Salami actually holding on to this position. Town Center looking to fire off on those villagers. You can see right there taking out a fair few. Keep down to almost 2k health. Getting worked down slowly, but steadily. He's healing it up pretty effectively at this point, but he's buying himself time, so that's the big thing. Still got this sacred site down towards the south. Sprinkled outpost now coming through here as well. No bombards for these bad boys just yet, but uh, speaking of bombards, uh, how you doing up there? Looks like we've got another one in queue uh, coming out of the siege workshop, and I really love this. Uh, and so now a sprinkled going to be coming out as well, but keep in mind, sprinkled up against bombard. I mean, it's never going to be that, that much of a, a, a fair trade when you've got uh, bombards that don't uh, are up against springholds that don't have their roller shutter triggers so you can see it right there roller shutter triggers and now that bombard outpost or bombard emplacement on the outpost coming off and getting some good damage down on that springholds is doing a huge amount and he's going to slowly but steadily work back towards this position he's got to be careful here because he's putting up a lot of barracks but at the same time oh he's got his imperial officials on the front line going to be oh this is so smart from salami he's such an aggressive player like seriously i love the way that he plays this kind of this play style he's got so many resources in the bank as well he's, look at the gold trickle he's got 500 gold a minute how's it five shouldn't it be three plus oh there you go should be 600 now i'm gonna be careful those palace guards gonna be coming out you can see they've got the torches out villagers standing idly by ready to take out the uh or ready to repair and they're gonna be careful that that bombard gonna go down if he's not careful and pulling more villagers now to get the heals and you can see he's turned it back around just so that he can try and survive a little bit longer there we go bombard is going to be absolutely fine as he changed those heals together and bombard is going to be a-okay his brother turns around and now going to be firing off at what appeared to be point, point blank range but just deciding now he's going for the triple bombard threat this is it ladies and gentlemen this is what this is what life is all about it's about triple bombards what the heck is going on right now he's literally making only bombards in this position but at the same time i mean knowing how salami plays it kind of makes a, a fair bit of sense goes for these berries finally manages to take these berries hasn't got his wheelbarrow yet by the way 18 minutes gosh that feels bad man uh barbican goes down and now it looks like salami gonna have uh, a bit of trouble here as he's gonna lose his forward position uh now one of the smart things to do would be a prelate what you do with the prelate actually going back and grab this uh go grab back and grab these relics bring one of them forward and just see, sit them on the bombard so that if the uh, palace guards do run in you just fire down the palace guards with your bombards and then if they run in you just hit the wallalo button and that was it cleans up all four of those barracks cleans up the barbican cleans up the uh, siege workshop the uh, the keep and now i'm gonna take out the tr not the transport ship transport ship goes down now comes down for the war junk as well war junk not the war junk not the war junk the war junk also goes down well, well played by Core. Great job there. Um, but the only issue is that, um, Core, you are on a timer, my friend. 24 minutes was the, the call out. Now, there's a nice little way that you can get around this wall, and it would be very, very simple. Um, so I, I think like five lands connects. Oh, but you do have this outpost to contend with. Maybe bring like one bombard into this position here, and then take down the outpost. Look to try and secure a dock. Oh, but the scout's here, so he spots it anyway. Oh, my God. Salami's so good at this game, isn't he, dude? Like, he just he's ahead of the game ahead of the curve and like you can push towards this north and that that's where your enemy's expecting you push because there's two sacred sites up there but at the same time like the south is just you know what you've got three bombards just go to the south 
Like, literally just go to the south. What does Salami do to that? I think Salami has to build a transport ship to get his units across, right? And that's what it becomes about. I would just go to the south at this point. You got three bombards. Just get like a couple. Carrick? You go for a Carrick? All right. Okay. Going to be going for a Carrick. But keep in mind, he needs to take over. He needs to deny out that sacred site victory. It is ticking. That's the thing. And now we see the, the uh, units beginning to come in. Bombard's going to have to turn back around. He, that's that's actually an awful lot of units right there. He's going to be really careful here. The Lancers are probably not going to get one shot by the Bombards. They only do 170. He's got elite knights, though, which are going to be able to do a pretty decent job of defending. Uh, but at the same time, there's just so many palace guards in here. He's not really able to do too much with them. He's managed to get his village account up to 68 at this point, going up against the 69 of Salami, which is very nice, but does lose those Bombards. And unfortunately, it looks like Core not going to be able to pull this one out. Core just really just... Uh, getting beaten pretty damn hardly unfortunately uh, probably didn't realize it was a water map but when it comes to this map i mean at this point in time we can talk a little bit more about it because you can see that salami is absolutely rampaging over the top of him as, as classic salami style does um but i mean when it comes to this map obviously the, the pond in the middle isn't uh it, it is significant in, in its strategic importance but it's militaristic importance less so you can see that a lot of the fighting in this game was over on the land uh it, it really did it, evolve or, or involve a lot of the land so i wouldn't go I, I would definitely say this is better like okay this is better than danube river definitely uh this is better than confluence definitely um what are our other hybrid maps that i can think of mongolian heights uh probably probably better than mongolian heights um because like with mongolian heights the river runs the entire length of the map so like there's no if you control the river then that's just it like th there's nothing your enemy can do where in, in in this game even if you control the pond you can still like you can still go for like a little chop through or something like that and then then come through whereas if you just don't have control of the river that that's or if you if your enemy has control of the river there's nothing that you can do so i'm trying to think of other like hybrid maps as well that that are there but I, I just I, I I quit whenever I see a hybrid map. I just I can't be bothered playing it. I just don't enjoy it. I know a lot of people feel the same way, but now we see Core dropping a defensive keep down. I'm not sure if he realizes, but he's probably got about two minutes left until the bells start dinging. Uh, geez, I'm good. Geez, I'm good. Two minutes until sacred defeat. He manages or at least tries to get this keep up to hold his position. But keep in mind, he's got to try and deny these sacred sites. So that's going to be the hard part. So we'll see if he manages to do it. We can see that uh, down towards the south, there's still no real push happening for him. He's going to continue trying to fight it out. Good good job, Corp, trying to fight it out. And now coming through here, I think that uh, Salami's probably just gone AFK at this point. He's completely walled himself out. He's a happy camper. Uh, one of the, th the things that you'd probably even look to do on a map like this is actually just wall the sacred site in. And it looks like Core just taps out. Core has just tapped out. He said, you know what? There was no way I could have done it. There was no way I could have brought this one back. I had the defensive keep. I had the three bombards, but it just wasn't enough. Fellas, I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. This one was hosted by Litacore. Make sure you check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you for watching.